Hi Aquarius, welcome to your end of September 2021 general tarot update. It's Raina here. So I don't know if you can feel the energy building for the full moon in Pisces. Um, as I record this, it's a couple of days away uh, tw on the 20th of September. In my neck of the woods, uh, if you're in Europe and other places, it'll be on the 21st, but all in the same time frame. So uh, for you, this is falling in the second house of earned income, so there could be some developments with your finances. Hmm. We have some intense energy. Now that's a good one. And I'll tell you what I think might be going on. Okay. Because um, you did have a couple of full moons, as you know, including that blue moon. One was at one degree of Aquarius, one was at 29 degrees. So it really went to the two extremes of your sign. And at the time of a, a full moon, the sun is uh, opposing exactly. So uh, Leo uh, was the sun sign. And that's why it was, you know, in the period of July and August. Now, in the... In your chart, that's the seventh house of committed partnership. So some of these cards look like some kind, maybe a dissolving of a marriage and the, perhaps the, the law coming into it, but also the emotions coming into it. And maybe they were, um, delayed emotions, emotions that never really, um, had, a, had an outlet. Another thing too, that you've had. Um, this is more last year's stuff going on, but because of your individual chart, you may still have it, um, is Saturn was in, uh, Capricorn. It was in your 12th house. Actually, Pluto is there. So Pluto is still there. That, that's enough, you know, but, um, uh, I think also, the remnants of Saturn, or if you still have it in the 12th house, if you know your chart, um, this can create a, a dark night of the soul. And a dark night of the soul is actually an amazing experience, a very powerful experience. Uh, the darkness is really the letting go and the disillusionment. The 12th house is the house of illusions. And, uh, and this is kind of like not having those illusions. So that can manifest in, in a whole bunch of ways. We do have here in the past position, the nine of swords. This is a card of anxiety, uh, insomnia too. You can see the person sitting up in the, probably the middle of the night and with their head in their hands. And somebody mentioned in one of the books but it's really not that bad. They're making mountains out of molehills because they have little flowers on their blanket. <laughs> oh, sure. That's, that's, see, that's proof that they're making mountains out of molehills. I mean, yes, it could be symbolic, but, uh, I don't know about that. You know, I, I don't even know where I read that, but it was, it was, it's kind of funny. Um, so the, the point is that, um, if you've been going through something, it doesn't have to be a divorce. I'm just bringing up recent astrological uh, happenings to kind of figure out what it might be. But in general, it, it might be like some kind of a major change in your life. And Aquarians, being the contrarian Aquarians that you are, um, even though you're supposed to be so unpredictable and, you know, Uranian, unpredictable, eccentric and all that, you're a fixed sign and you do tend to like constancy. So that's the, uh, you know, the thing that's so contradictory in your nature is that, you know, you, you, 
rep your ruling planet represents this kind of curveball situation and yet you personally don't necessarily like to have um, things just happen or you know drop in your lap like that now this is the heart of the matter and this is the king of cups this can be a counselor you know so if you're going to a therapist or contemplating going to a therapist this could be it now if you are still married to someone and you're waking up in the middle of the night and in a cold sweat that could be saying that the relationship is really getting to you uh, psychologically, like it's starting to really bother you. And I think that this that could definitely be something that is going on with some of you Aquarians because Aquarius is a sign that is very, very tolerant. I mean, well, I'm not going to get too far into astrology because that's not all, that's not necessarily true 100% of the times. I have personal experience in this, uh, but I'm not going to go there. Um, but in general, uh, you're not like, typically, you're not the jealous kind, you're not the suspicious kind, you're just kind of, uh, you're, you're kind of in your own head. And so that's one aspect of it where you're not necessarily grounded and, um, in touch with the mundane reality and so and you you're very brilliant so you just may have a lot of interesting thoughts rattling around in your brain but you but that can keep you from tuning into what's right under your nose and that might be it like if a relationship was not nurtured the way it should have been or if the other person has been going out a lot and maybe you just didn't think to question it you find out after the fact that something else has been happening and uh, the king of cups could be a marriage counselor could be a priest could be anyone who you're going to for wisdom or guidance this might be a shoulder shoulder you cry on so whether this is a father or a father figure the person will be very understanding um, if you have fallen in love with a, a king of cups, this person is a very emotionally balanced and healthy individual. They're not game players. So the king represents maturity. I mean, chronological maturity, um, well, chrono it could be a chronologically um, mature person, but it can also be somebody, if they're younger, who is mature for their age. So maybe this is somebody new in your life. That could be it as well. The higher message is a justice card, and this is like justice will prevail in this matter. And... Um, Another thing too is if this is job related, um, you, you may be attracting a boss who is very compassionate and perhaps you've had, you've been through the ringer with someone who was the exact opposite of that, who wasn't very uh, sensitive to your needs. The justice card is connected to Libra, which is one of the air signs like you and, um, you know, represented by the swords. So that could be a person too that is helpful. What crosses you is the eight of swords, more swords. Swords can relate to conflict. The eight of swords in particular can be a card of um, someone who is holding themselves back with their own negative self-talk. So, um, you know, like, for instance, let's say that you really want to have a partner who is like the King of Cups. And I would say, especially if you are a sun in Pisces, or sun in, sun in Aquarius, and you have Pisces placements. 
So may and and the moon could be in or any of the water signs, especially Pisces or Cancer. But if you're if you're Mercury, Venus, Mars is in Pisces, you might be more sensitive than the average Aquarian. Aquarians can be extremely detached. And some of you Sun and Aquarian Aquarius have inner plants in Capricorn, and boy, that'll make you even more detached. But if you have it on the other side, the Pisces side, that can make you a lot more sensitive and even vulnerable. And you may have this tendency to talk down to yourself, and that is part of your vulnerability. And you're really what you need in your life, if you're going to have a relationship, is somebody like the King of Cups, who is compassionate. And the, the, the swords can relate to fellow air signs like Gemini and Libra and, of course, Aquarius, too. So you might be very drawn to those kinds of people, especially on the mental plane, because the intellectual level you may have a lot in common, but you may find emotionally that you're left high and dry by some of these people. And that is the thing that keeps you from feeling a sense of um, safety even within the relationship because um, especially for those of you who have been through trauma and like the trauma bond was broke, I mean the um, attachment bond was broken when you were very young, maybe you were adopted or you were... Um, what do you say, pawned off or palmed off? I don't know the the right term. Off to relatives because your one or both of your parents were not capable of taking care of you. That can create a lot of insecure attachment uh, tendencies, and and even an Aquarian can become very clingy um, if they have that background, and it's it's. That's something to definitely heal because that tends to push people away too. Now, I would say if that's the case, you you probably would have been born with the moon in Pisces or Cancer or something like that. Um, there would probably be supporting energies. It's like because two signs or two configurations of people in terms of their chart configurations can have the same experience and have different reactions to it. So it really does make a difference about what your uh, combination is in terms of how it's going to really impact you. What is coming in is a 10 of cups. This is the card of happily ever after. So there is, you know, the number 10 is a a number that connects with the end of a cycle. So when you have cups, the emotional cycle can be even like a negative pattern. So this would be a great time around this time of the full moon Aquarius to really tune into yourself. Uh, even like, you know, like doing shadow work around the issue of self-esteem because this is what the second house can represent include you know in addition to your um the money you earn the second house can be about your self-esteem and with the full moon can put it on full blast and can really um heighten your psychic tendencies and you do have aquarians do have um overt gifts in this area and really see, check in with yourself because maybe there is some work in this area you need to do. And there are plenty of, there's plenty of material out there, either online or books to assist you on your journey from the spiritual perspective. Because, you know, when I was younger, I read a lot of self-help books. I'm sure, you know, they were very big in the eighties and everything. And that was just, um, that was just perfect for me because I've always been interested in, you know, that, that the whole self-growth, self-improvement type of thing. But 
you know, recently when I look at those books now, my heart kind of sinks because I'm in a different space now. And, um, what used to be very enjoyable now feels kind of oppressive. Like, um, it's really about, it's, it's really materialistic sometimes, even with, uh, attitudes about relationships when I I'm using the word materialistic not meaning actual material things I'm just talking about the attitude the worldly attitude so this is one of the things to avoid getting sucked into and I think a lot of Aquarians are not plugged into the matrix like their fellow human beings because you are very um forward looking visionary and you can't be bothered by the world um there's too many more interesting things like intergalactic <laughs> kind of things so the ten of cups can be a card of marriage it can be the card of feeling that you know what you have been wanting especially you know on that emotional level uh, is something that you're going to have come to you or it is coming to you. Maybe there's a, some sort of party, some sort of event. Um, this especially can be like if you're, go, maybe your child is get your adult child is getting married and you're the mother of the bride or the groom. Maybe um, this is something to do with a new birth or pregnancy that you've heard about and you're going to a wedding shower I mean a baby shower I don't know I don't know if they specifically talk about baby showers with the ten of cups they definitely talk about marriage like weddings and stuff like that but I'm going to just extend it to any like um happy event that has a um, connection to a group of people or a family, you know, family matters. This is a family card and it's actually a card of family joy. So kind of like the nine of cups, but for all the family, the outcome is the knight of swords. So there can be like very rapid changes. So, you know, it's almost like if you have been suffering from a past relationship and yet you have met somebody else. It's like you you get divorced or leave that relationship and it's you're right back in another relationship. Uh, and, you know, I'm not saying during the next two weeks. I'm saying that might be the overall theme. And so what I feel that the lesson here is that... Um, you have to tune in more to what is happening around you because you may have been out of the loop, so to speak. And it's like the Knight of Swords, even on a personal level, this can be becoming outspoken and uh, daring in that sense. And maybe you allowed certain things to go on way too long in a relationship and I'm, I've been bringing up like kind of a spousal relationship, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it might even be like a boss who is very narcissistic. The king of cups is the ideal boss because there's somebody who, you know, like the king of pentacles can be, especially in the challenge in the reverse position can be very, um, materialistic to the point where they're not even, um, respecting their employees they're just kind of looking at them as numbers and that isn't an ideal situation to say the least even if you're being paid well you don't want to be in a situation where you're just being seen as a number or as the cash cow you want to feel like you're being respected and cared for and the same with relationships 
but there's there's kind of a break in the action and you might feel you might see that life is starting to the um rut that you might have been in or the holding pattern is breaking up very rapidly so that's what i have for you aquarius i hope that this resonated if you would like a private reading the link is below thanks for watching take care bye